increase prove that you are delivered. God, I can shout on that right now. Hallelujah. It is a joy to know that you are delivered when you would have slapped somebody's teeth out and you didn't. Ha! Glory to God. Don't be thinking about how mad you can get about them. Just go on and praise him because the old devil didn't rise up in you. Oh, I don't want to give my good steps out there yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when you are saved, it is a joy. When you are really saved, it is a joy. When the devil don't rise up in you, it's... Good God Almighty, it is a joy. Amen. Uh, 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 I, I won't need that. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to sweat a while. Sweat my clothes down there. Jesus. Man. Woo! Adversaries. We have adversaries. And their assignment is to prove our salvation. That we are delivered. You hear me? Man, I tell you. I, can, I, I, I think about four or five things that happen. In my life since I've been saved and, and, and I've been delivered from. Amen. One time I had a baseball bat on my way back to the man in back of me with a car in the car. <laughs> but I'm delivered now. I know that's why. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying to you. Deliverance. 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 He says salvation. And Apostle Paul says in verse number 19. Watch this. <clears throat> For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your what? Prayer. Through your prayers. In other words, I'm going to have deliverance through your prayer. Now, Pastor Paul is talking about deliverance, and he's telling the church here that they will be delivered. Now, watch chapter 4. This is the last verse, and I'm going to move. Verse 19. Because verse 19 is very compatible to verse 6 of chapter 1 of Philippians. Now, in verse 19, he says, But my God, oh, say it nice and loud. Say it nice and loud. Shall supply, read all. Uh -huh. Now, instead of saying your, say my. my. Amen. Read it again. My, my needs. And, mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, Jesus. Uh, what, 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 what is he really saying here? I, 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 I dare you to say, I dare you to read it one more time. Mm. Uh, say it one more time. Now, instead of saying, my God, say El Shaddai. Ah. Say El Shaddai. That's because he is the all bountiful or supplier of all of our needs. Are you with me now? And so when he mentions here uh, that El Shaddai shall supply all my needs, it means that he emphasizes the providence of God. And because he is emphasizing the providence of God, it means that it does not start now. It does not Start now. But it means that uh, he is able to fulfill his mission. And the mission of God is 
that he do everything that he said he would do. And when God spoke to God about Bigelow, he entered into his providence. And the Bible said that uh, he would do all things that he have declared that he would do. The providence means that uh, God has foresight. In other words, all that he seen, hallelujah, from the beginning, meant that he saw ahead of Dr. Bigelow. And he also uh, forethought. So he not only foresees, but he also forethinks. And what he thought about Bigelow, uh, he is still thinking it now. What did he say about Jeremiah? Uh, amen. He said that uh, I know.